Bonjour, South by Southwest. Hello from the beautiful Fi Center in Montreal. My name is Miriam Machard, and I'm Chief New Media Partnerships and PR at Fi, and I will be the moderator today. Space has always been the area beyond what we have been capable of reaching. With advances recently, it's time to redefine what space means to us culturally and socially. What is it like to bring back on Earth what is so beyond reaching? The title of our panel today is The Infinite, A New Space Age, The Virtual Collective Experience. Through The Infinite, our project with Phi Studio, Felix and Paul Studios, and Time Studios, we will explore our capacity as a species to go beyond our limits and reflect collectively on humanity's place among the stars together. Let me now introduce you our two panelists. Phoebe Greenberg, bonjour. bonjour. Founder and Chief Creative Officer at Phi. Phoebe Greenberg has been a cultural protagonist in Montreal for over 20 years. In addition to DHC Art, now Phi Foundation for Contemporary Art, established in 2007, Phoebe founded the Phi Center in 2012, a multidisciplinary arts organization that offers multiple perspectives of emerging ideas in art and technology. Conceived as a creative ecosystem, The Phi Center prototypes interdisciplinary projects with progressive technologists, musicians, films, VR directors, designers, and so on. In recent history, Phoebe's attention has been in the realm of contemporary media. The Phi Center focuses on the exhibition of works at the axis of art and technology. Most recently, creating installations that travel the world, envisioning future generation storytelling possibilities, and a panoramic perspective of emerging ideas. Félix Lajeunesse, bonjour. Hello. <laughs> Félix Lajeunesse, co-founder and creative director at Félix and Paul Studios. Founded in 2013, Félix and Paul Studios is an Emmy award-winning creator of immersive entertainment experiences, creating unparalleled, highly engaging, inspired virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality experiences for audiences worldwide. Throughout his career, Felix has fused that sense of immediacy with a spirit of exploration to bring the creative possibilities of immersive entertainment to audiences through a variety of mediums that forge new frontiers in cinematic storytelling. Felix has directed and co-directed most of the studio's 30 immersive experiences to date. In this panel, we will discover the genesis of the infinite, and it will be an opportunity to learn more about the collaboration between Phi Studio and Felix and Paul Studio. Finally, we will learn more about the experience itself. So let's start with collaboration and expertise. In a few words, the infinite is an immersive virtual reality voyage of the senses into space. The experience allows you to immerse yourself in a life-size model of the International Space Station and view exclusive footage captured by astronauts for Space Explorers, the ISS experience, the largest production ever filmed in space. First of all, we want to know how it all started. Tell us more about this collaboration and the role of both parties, and why space? What fascinates you both about space? Who wants to start? Uh, I can start. Um, well, maybe I can start with the fascination of space, uh, because that's where it all started. For me, space is the unknown. Uh, it really embodies the unknown. It's about uh, going out to figure out our origins and our place in the universe. And it's a scientific endeavor, it's a technological endeavor, but it's also an existential endeavor and to a certain extent, a spiritual endeavor as well. So growing up, I was always fascinated by that. Um, through all of the projects that we have created at Felix and Paul Studios over the years, um, it was always in our minds to eventually dive into the world of human spaceflight through virtual reality. Uh, in 2016, we started working with NASA, documenting the uh, training of a new generation of astronauts. So we filmed at different places around the world, 
and became friends with astronauts and started to develop relationships with different people at NASA. And then we started pitching them on what we wanted to do next. And that was to send virtual reality cameras to the International Space Station to start documenting the life of astronauts living aboard the ISS. So when we started that process, um, we felt very strongly that we wanted that content that we knew would be unique and special to be distributed broadly across the world. And we also knew that we wanted to create a premium exhibition or installation to bring that content to light in the best possible way and to create a physical experience around the content. Um, and we turned to our friends and partners at Phi Center to uh, actually create this with us because for the last couple of years, they have created extraordinary exhibitions that feature VR works and we felt that they would be uh, essential partners. Well, I think in, in the in looking at this exhibition and, and having the opportunity of seeing the content that was filmed on the ISS station through Felix and Paul, not only did it feed my curiosity about, about the human condition in space and what it means to be completely void of anything that we understand on Earth and, and the science behind it, and the content is, is just extraordinary. And the whole team effort of the engagement of the astronauts, the engagement of, of NASA, um, and the fact that there was such direct communication with the Felix and Paul studio to really have not so much a narrative thread, but a real sense of, of story and experience. And, and having the, the sense of our presence um, on the space station and finding doorways in the exhibition to really elaborate um, the human body as it, as it feels and senses um, a completely different experience, not on this earth. Um, so Phoebe, you are deeply turned towards the art of tomorrow. Um, what is the place of contemporary art in this experience? How can we merge contemporary art with spa spa spatial aesthetics, creating meaningful connection and trustly relationship with collaborators in various artistic spheres? Well, the first thing that, that, that I did when I was contemplating um, this experience was to visit what was already out there, which is generally um, exhibitions built around artifacts in more of a science center environment. And I really felt that the territory of immersive experiences and, and really experimental art, people are very hungry for an, a new experience. And so institutions are thinking about um, ticket sales and, and, and ephemeral experiences as opposed to a more object oriented practice for exhibitions. So, so for me, it was a real um, goal to, to really be able to highlight the work of this extraordinary content, but in a way that was um, not only lived through a communal of people, but also um, to sense how we can move and, and interact with this content in a meaningful way. And one of the ideas was to seek a collaboration with a contemporary artist. So I invited Ryoji Ikeda to, to participate um, following an introduction to Felix and Paul. And, and his work is really anchored in um, the digital landscape. Uh, he's a electronic composer as well as a visual artist, but he really thinks about data and the expansive universe of data. So I found that this was a really interesting way of uh, contextualizing um, the experience in a physical way and also in a, in a real, the mechanics of his work is based in um, particle physics and quantum mechanics. And so that there's a thematic uh, that is, is, is harmonious between the language of, of the ISS and, and the whole science behind getting man on space and some of the preoccupations of Ryoji's work. Felix, did you know Ryoji? 
um, what, before Phoebe uh, thought of, of bringing him on board? So vaguely, and I remember I was in a van with Phoebe and we were driving and she said, do you know Ryoji Ikeda? I said, yeah, vaguely. And she said, I think his work could connect beautifully with what we're trying to accomplish. And see, she took out her phone and she started to show me certain selected works that, that she had in mind. And, I, and my mind was just blown. Uh, and I realized that, that that was the moment where I realized that that exhibition would be awesome, is, is when I saw that. Because I thought that's exactly what is going to make the whole tone of this exhibition shift into real poetry and, and lyricism and something that we've never really seen you know, associated to exhibitions about human space exploration, which have traditionally uh, have been, like Phoebe said, more leaning towards a science center type of approach, which is great, but which does not necessarily allow you to approach the subject matter in, in the same way and get the same kind of emotional experience out of the subject matter. And so, um, yeah, I'm very excited about that collaboration. Um, not everybody knows what free roaming is. Can you maybe tell us a little bit more about what it is and guide us through um, that? Yeah, absolutely. So the Infinite exhibition is going to be set inside of a very large space, a 10,000 square foot space. And within that area, there's going to be a very vast space of about 6,000 square foot uh, that is reserved for what we call a free roaming virtual experience. So what that means is that audiences are going to put virtual reality glasses on and they're going to enter this vast space where they will see a life-size uh, digital reproduction of the International Space Station. And they're going to be allowed to walk freely inside of that digital recreation of the ISS. And as they do so, they will discover in the different modules of the ISS uh, what we could call floating orbs, or what we call hotspots. And when they enter those floating orbs, that will trigger a cinematic virtual reality scene that has been filmed inside of the space station precisely from the vantage point where the viewer is in their free roaming experience. So it, it's a way to actually give back the discovery, a, the, a, the agency of the storytelling to audiences that are you know, walking on their own and deciding to visit this area or that area according to their own uh, impulse, to their own desires. And, uh, and so we are articulating a narrative through that, but the audiences are discovering that narrative in a way that that, that, that uses their body in a way to complement the storytelling. And so that's, that's the approach that we've taken for this. Is it the first time that something of this magnitude is, is being made, um, including like you know, the, the space you mentioned, it's gonna be needed and, and like a lot of people at the same time? It is. Um, there have been pretty uh, large uh, experiences that have been created uh, but it was in the case of experiences like Carnegie Arena, for example, um, a single person at a time type of experience. And that is a collective experience. So depending on the venues where we go, we're going to have um, from 25 to 100 people at the same time going inside of the large uh, free roaming environment and discovering the content together. And nothing of that scale has ever been made before uh, in the world of virtual reality. And so uh, that's going to be a pretty groundbreaking uh, experience for audiences. I think groundbreaking is definitely the, the perfect term to describe what's, what's coming. Um, Felix, how can we, because I know you've been working on, on that experience like for, for a long time, but how can we conceive collaborative exhibitions that require various expertise such as contemporary art, space, XR with major partners such as Time Studios, NASA, FI? You want to walk us, walk us through a little bit there? Yeah. Um, so that didn't happen overnight. Uh, it was a, a long process of building relationships. Um, so we've been uh, partners with uh, the Phi Center for many years since the inception of the studio. Um, and we had the desire to collaborate creatively together to create something, but we didn't necessarily find the opportunity, you know, when we started. Um, and so in the meantime, uh, at Felix and Paul Studios, we went on creating our projects, eventually started a relationship with NASA, which eventually led us to sending virtual reality cameras in space. And when we started that production called Space Explorers, the ISS Experience, we wanted to work with a media partner and a producing partner, uh, such as 
Time Studios in order to really tell the story, not just the story we were telling through the project, but also the story of the making of the project. And Time came on board uh, to help us do all of that. And when we discovered that we had to create a large-scale traveling exhibition, a very well-curated, well-designed uh, you know, traveling exhibition around that content and to bring all of that content to light, then we forged the partnership with Phi Center and we finally found the opportunity to creatively work together that we uh, had wanted to, to find for a long time. Um, and they came on board with a sensibility uh, and an experience in the world of contemporary arts that really added uh, to the project creatively. And so that, that is how this whole kind of recipe, uh, you know, became, became what we are talking about today. Oh, it was interesting because in the, in the beginning, it was just um, Felix Paul, myself, and Marie Bressal, who's a, a theater practitioner um, in a room. And we went in, in a few short months from four to, I think now we're at 60 odd people who are working on this project. Um, there's so many doorways, not only to the uh, visitor experience condition, but also the, the whole mechanics and, the, and as you were mentioning earlier, uh, the prototyping of these experiences. We're looking at a 150 people per hour to experience this. So it was really important that we took into consideration the onboarding and the offboarding and really bringing people in to a, a, a poetic narrative that, that made it almost seamless um, to go from the virtual to the real. So we, we, we took into consideration architectural conditions and, and, and inspired by um, the wormhole and, 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 and various sensibilities in space that, that we really wanted people, as soon as they entered into um, the exhibition, that they really felt that what they understood on Earth was put into question. So, so it, it, it's, it's extraordinary to work with so many different collaborators who really have a specific expert, expertise. And I think to think about your original question, how is it to, to layer on um, these conditions in an exhibition? And, and I would say it's, um, I think it's the future. Uh, I think that as institutions start to consider these ephemeral interactive experiences and, and really change the ecosystem or the, the trends of, of art exhibitions, this is now um, requires the thought and, and particular talents of such a diverse group of people. So I'm, I'm really one of a small particle <laughs> of, of the many people who have contributed to this vision. But ultimately, the content um, that, that I had the opportunity of seeing a year and some ago was just blew my mind. So uh, everybody's truly inspired to, to get this uh, actively um, engaging with, with a worldwide public. Um. Felix, earlier you, you talked about the free roaming. Um, another groundbreaking fact about this experience is that we will be able to, well, not we, but you will be able to film a spacewalk with your own camera. Do you want to tell us more? This is like completely surreal to, uh, to even think about that. Yeah, it's very stressful because we're just about to actually go and film it. Um, it's by far the most uh, preparation for a few days of filming that I've ever made. Uh, so basically, um, as you evoked earlier, we have been filming inside of the space station for two years. So we filmed about 200 hours of footage with eight international astronauts. And all of that two year long process is going to conclude with taking a second virtual reality camera that was sent to the ISS just a few months ago that we call the outer space camera to take this technology outside of the International Space Station. It's going to be attached to the Canadian arm and we're going to use um, the Canadian arm as a sort of giant celestial crane 
if you will, uh, that we will use to move the camera all around the International Space Station. And we're going to do mainly three things with that. We're going to film the International Space Station uh, from many different angles. We're going to capture a spacewalk with two astronauts. So for six and a half hours, we will follow the astronauts from the moment they come out of the station until the moment that they go back in. Uh, and we're going to be up close with them as if we were the third crew member experiencing the deadly vacuum of space, but also the extraordinary breathtaking beauty of planet Earth that is there all the time. Um, and we will spend a few more days outside of the space station after the spacewalk is finished to film planet Earth um, and to extend the arm as much as we can to be as far away from the station as possible so that we can give audiences the experience of just floating above the world um, with no interference and your whole field of view is going to be our planet and you know nothing like that has ever been captured before and that footage um, that we're more than excited and thrilled but also a little scared to go out and capture uh, <laughs> is going to form a very important uh, moment inside the journey of the infinite exhibition sort of a climax if you will will your cameras cameras or camera, like, will it stay on the space station uh, for a little while? Does it mean that the, the, it could be like an evolving content as part of the infinite? Well, that's the really interesting part of um, the evolution of this piece is that as it continues to travel the world, um, we can constantly feed it content. Uh, I think that, that in the digital landscape, this is an opportunity that, that keeps um, all this work relevant uh, as, it, as, as we move through time. Um, it's so exciting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, as you were speaking, I was just, because we haven't gotten to that point where we've, yeah. we've seen the, the, the footage unencumbered by, um, you know, the view from the ISS. So I can sense uh, Felix's excitement and um, trepidation but but uh, it's it's the the whole evolution of this project um, we're really at the beginning and I can see uh, we we do our first install here in in Montreal at the Arsenal and uh, already we've done one prototyping where we brought in people to give their comments and and we were really uh, pleasantly surprised at how far uh, the project is advanced and 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 um, and feel that it's an ever-evolving, infinite experience. Yeah, and I think that, you know, when you look at the history of human presence in space, we're still at chapter one of mm -hmm. that history. We went to the moon, you know, in the 60s, and we did build the space station, and all of that is great. But when you look at what's coming ahead in the next few decades, humans are planning to go back to the moon to stay there, so they want to build a base on the moon and make that sort of the ground base camp in a way to explore the solar system. And then from there, Mars and then Jupiter and then beyond. And so I feel that we're at step one of what will be uh, uh, something truly extraordinary and something that will take more and more part in our imagination and in our cultures down on Earth. I think space is going to occupy more and more space in human imagination uh, in uh, the next few years. And in a way, that exhibition comes, in my perspective, at the right time. So for you, like, you wouldn't be surprised, or maybe this is what you, what you wish, what you want, but your camera in two years from now, in three years from now, the moon, Mars, this is really what you're aiming for? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, everything that we have learned filming aboard the International Space Station and very soon outside of the International Space Station, we see that as a foundation to actually go further and bring that technology, but really bring millions of people, you know, to space. So it starts with low Earth orbit and then going to deep space, the moon, Mars, and eventually beyond. And so, yes, we definitely want to continue that journey. Um, what is the message you, you would like visitors to keep after this multi-sensory experience? How do you want to engage the audience? Well, I think it's, it's a really unique opportunity to be an active participant in this sensory experience. 
Uh, we thought a great deal about the body, the onboarding, the, the seamlessness, the narrative structure, um, you know, the architecture, everything to really uh, highlight, which is something that Felix and I spoke about for many, many years, is the difference between sort of a VR experience, which is immersive, and a VR experience where we, you really have a sense of a transportation that you're, you're transported uh, your presence is transported. Um, there is no better experience than being transported to space. I mean, it's a it was a real challenge for for um, that adjustment just to even think it's possible. But but the feeling that that we know that through the VR uh, technology that that we really feel and the way that it's filmed and the participation and engagement of the astronauts, we really feel that we're there. And I think that the possibility of, of understanding to, to, to see how far the human spirit can, can do extraordinary things and, and the overview effect is really uh, the perspective of the astronauts that, that we're in, um, bringing in the narrative structure, their own testimony um, from the first time that they experienced the overview effect. So there's a spiritual journey as part of this, but coming through the reality of, of these astronauts who live it in a way that obviously 99% of the population and then some will not experience. And this is the closest we have to really understanding life in space. And Felix and Paul Studios has done an extraordinary job to give us that opportunity. And we're hopefully bringing in the doorways um, to really understanding the poetry and the spirit behind this, this incredible adventure of space. Mm. Yeah, and um, Phoebe referred to uh, the astronaut testimonies mm -hmm. that really form, in a way, the heart of the storytelling of this exhibition. One thing that the astronauts talk a lot about when they um, evoke their experience of watching the Earth from space is this idea of the overview effect. And they generally talk about the feeling of the interconnection of everything. And it's an idea that we know about here on Earth, but that we don't necessarily feel all the time. And astronauts generally talk about the fact that they truly, truly feel that. And it's this concept that as humans, we sometimes feel detached from one another, especially in those days. <laughs> uh, and we also sometimes feel detached from the natural world. You know, we feel like there's a kind of a dichotomy. And we certainly sometimes feel detached from space and from the cosmos. It's as if we existed outside of all of those things, but we don't. You know, when you think about space, we live in space. We are made of space. We are traveling through space at light speed every second of our lives. And so space is us and we are space. And the same is true of the natural world and, and the human world as well. And, and it's, it's a concept that might sound ethereal, but But all I've heard from the astronauts is that when you're in space, you really feel it, like intuitively, you feel that. And it's something that, that I think is very profound from the standpoint of the human experience and something that we have tried to bring forth in that experience of the infinite as, as much as we possibly could. Um, and I think probably the world needs a little bit of that these days. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, So a project of this magnitude comes obviously with challenges. I don't know if you want to sh share some of the challenges. And of, on top of that, we have a pandemic, like COVID-19 forced you, forced the team to reevaluate some of some parts, some, do you want to talk, tell, share with us um, some of the challenges? Well, I can see this, tell you the positive stuff. Always um, good to start with the positive. I mean, I think I think for in preparation for um, launching the infinite, um, there is a great deal of technical and engineering. Um, so, so the focus on this project and the inspiration, um, thinking about the pandemic and thinking about to a certain degree, the detachment of, of, of 
adventure. Um, I, I think that this really drove us to, to work out every, as many details as we could possibly do. Um, the difficulty obviously is, is the consumption of, of an, any exhibition where, where there's restriction of, of, of space and, and, um, sanitization. I can't think of a better word. Uh, so, so we had to take, this was the ultimate test to make sure that this exhibition was feasible in the worst possible scenario. And I think that, that coming up with those solutions um, really allowed us to, to maybe reconsider things that we would have not delved in quite as deeply because of today's conditions. But the inspiration was even more enhanced mm -hmm. um, just because it's so important that people understand that that once you're off the planet, our perspective changes completely and maybe we take into consideration how precious um, we all are and, and taking care of each other and our planet. Do you want to share some of the challenges maybe like on the technical part or even like with the pandemic? Yeah, so, um, you know, when we heard of the pandemic, um, last early last year, we were in production in space. So we were filming with the astronauts. And um, I would say that we were midway in our production. Um, and it turned out that we weren't really affected because we were working with the only human beings that were off the planet <laughs> at the moment that the pandemic happened. And because of that, we were able to continue our production at full steam. Uh, the other thing that was interesting is that as you can imagine, uh, if you do a production from Earth to space, you have to make it remote. And so you have to be in a sort of virtual production uh, you know, mode of collaborating with NASA and with the astronauts. So we had to figure that out you know, two years before the pandemic to actually get started. And we were already very deep in our sort of remote operations when the pandemic happened. And it was interesting to see that, you know, the whole world of cinema and production, everybody was shifting gear and, and trying to understand how can you conduct remote operations and remote filming. And we were just right at the heart of that, you know, because we were filming in space. So for all of these reasons, we've been probably a little blessed and lucky uh, that uh, it wasn't, it didn't create interference and we were able to conclude our production in space, uh, even if the pandemic was there. And we also managed to integrate that to the story because of course the astronauts who were there were not on Earth with their loved ones, uh, and they had people down on Earth who were affected by the pandemic, but they weren't there with them. Mm. And they also knew that when they would come back to Earth, they would have to quarantine themselves before they could actually get to be with their loved ones. Um, and so all of that has been uh, integrated in the storytelling, and I think it, it's, uh, it was an interesting point of view to look at the pandemic from the perspective of space, and I think it adds to the project and to the story. So we actually were supposed, I don't know if you remember, but we were supposed to have this kind of, discuss, of discussion last year at South by Southwest. We were all going there. Uh, you would have had a fire chat um, uh, speaking about the exhibition, the experience. Um, so now it's one year later. Um, we can officially announce that um, the Infinite will world premiere in Montreal this summer, uh, mid-July. Um, and it will be presented for uh, approximately four months. After that, we hope to tour um, this, not we hope, we will. We will tour the Infinite. So looking, we're looking for uh, collaborators, museums that could host the, uh, this beautiful experience. Phoebe Greenberg, Felix La Jeunesse, thank you so much for this fascinating conversation. Um, thank you to the FI team for uh, recording today. And um, thank you to our friends at South By. Um, hopefully next year we'll be present in real life and uh, we get to uh, see each other again soon. Merci.